Hey everyone, I'm Daniel from Lens Software, and in this video I'll show you how to get your project started using Lens 4 and uh, how to construct a site in relation with your existing terrain and get some uh, rough volume estimations. Uh, I have my data here on the left, which is a bunch of spot levels and a couple of ridge lines I placed already in the Lens 4 existing category. And, uh, they represent a road all together with the terrain around. Now the least I have a simple sketch with a couple of measurements and four percentages. Um, and this represents very roughly the parking, which will be connected to the road. Same with the pavement around the parking. Now the least I have already drawn a polygon representing the parking lot and the parking edge. So I can use this later to build my ridge lines, uh, which are going to represent these objects. I have uh, created already a couple of categories here for each of the objects I'm planning to have. And in the layers in ArchiCAD, I have also created a layer for each of the categories. You can check them in the category settings and uh, under modify function you can assign your uh, desired layer also in the model view options under options for len4 i have um, the category settings and here for each category i have um, added a different color so it's easier to work with the spot levels in the plan view I have also defined my outer boundary of the area just so it's easier to recreate it every time. So I will start by just creating the terrain, the existing terrain using the data I have. And we can see our road which has some brake lines and the rest of the terrain, also in the 3D. So what I would basically want to do is just place my parking lot somewhere on the terrain where I can connect it to the existing road and then just do the rough estimations of the volumetrics and see how much cut and fill I will have um, in relation with my parking lot. I will start by simply dragging the polygons over my terrain. I am uh, I'm planning to place it somewhere here. I don't have in this situation um, I'm not obliged by any uh, by the cadaster or any kind of limits so I can decide where to put it and I decided to put it here and um, we can already see on the level lines there is a fall from the right top corner towards the left bottom one with the terrain so we can also see on the level lines that um, it's about 101 and a half meters goes to below 101 here and here it's uh, about 99 to 100 meters because I have the pavement I will have the pavement around the parking to have a rough estimation I can just create um, a polygon which roughly will match the also the pavement. So once I have this, I can uh, start um, interpolating some points and understand how this plan will uh, interfere with the existing terrain and uh, have a, just a rough estimation on where to place the parking or um, what height I should um, 
input for the parking lot. This corner here, it's already on a, an existing spot level. I can also interpolate uh, using the gravity tool under the play spot level and interpolate more. Uh, but before, I would like to match it even better with the road. So now I have the option to add another spot level here. Because the terrain is falling from the right top corner, I am considering using a, an interpolation and I will use the constant gradient interpolation where I can set a fall percentage and a direction. So I would like my terrain to, because I, here I'm limited by the road, so it has to attach to the road. I will use the existing spot level and then I will use a fall percentage towards this end and uh, I should use max 3% so I want to raise in this in this uh, situation not a fall therefore I will use a negative so I'll use minus 3% with a rubber band I can give the direction and this is the direction I want to have oops and now I could interpolate a spot level I'll also place one here and the other one I already have it. We can use the elevation palette so if I have it on and select two spot levels my elevation palette will pop in and here I am able to see the bottom and the top spot level and the fall in between them. So I have roughly 1.5% fall in between these two spot level and that's fine and I have a 3% fall in between these two. I can also place a fall line if I want to so I can always see what's the fall in between two spot levels. Now I have all four spot levels here and maybe I'll use this line um, as a ridge line so I will select it and then press on create ridge line function and now I just need to hover on top of these spot levels and simply click on them so they get attached to the polyline. Once I'm done I press the green mark and we can already take a look in the 3D view so this will be, or this is for now, our surface. So we can already see that here we would need to have a fill and on the other side we will need to have a cut because it goes below. An even easier way is to basically... So actually I have already placed these spot levels in the existing category but what I want want to do is place them in my special created category for this purpose which I have predefined so I can select them all together and place them in the test surface. Now I have uh, I have placed them in the right category I can create a, the surface so if I simply draw the parameter representing the test surface and press the green mark at the end, we can already see we have the surface with some level lines, level lines on it. Uh, I can change the surface material and maybe I can also change the level lines color so it's easier to distinguish and maybe also the height distance between the lines. So in the 3D 
first, you, when you create this, um, the layer becomes invisible, so you have to be aware of that. Um, but once I made it uh, visible again, I can now see my surface. Once I have my surface, I can already have a very rough volumetrics. So if I go under the create volumetrics uh, surface function, I just press on the button. And now I will have to select two surfaces I want to compare. And the first is the existing terrain, and the second one is our surface. For the last part, I just need to draw the fill again. And for the last part of the operation, we have always the next message coming into the palette. I have to just place a stamp. So I'll just place it somewhere here outside. We can already see that we will have a fill volume of roughly over 300 uh, cubic meters and a cut of 133. So I have to add to the side at this point about 200 cubic meters. I also have uh, the resulting surface in the 3D view, which is placed on the zero level. So we can actually see marked with red that um, this will be the cut and that is the surface um, between our testing surface and the existing terrain and the fill, which will be here underneath the surface. So basically, the resulting surface is just showing the differences between these two surfaces. Not the least, I can always add level lines on this surface. So if I want them more dense, we can now see the level lines just for the fill and not for the cut. And that is, it's because it's below zero. So if I select it again and go under the level lines, I can have the start level going below zero. So if I put it just 10 meters, for instance, we'll now have the level lines shown for both the fill and the cut. Following these lines on the resulting surface is just easy to see how much depth you have uh, in the cut and the fill. During this uh, rough estimations, we have to actually take into account the material we're going to use for constructing the parking and the pavement and um, the composites. So therefore, if uh, we use this into the math, it will be easy to balance out the volumes. Uh, I have calculated already the area of our test surface. And um, if we take a roughly uh, 30 centimeters in thickness uh, based on the material we need to add or the construction material we need to add to the surface, then we can uh, take that into the math of um, our volumes. Um, so we will have about 400 uh, cubic meters we need to add to the side. For now we have about 200 in, uh, in this uh, model we used. Therefore we need about 200 more and uh, in this way we can uh, balance out our volumes during the, the, the math. Um, not the least, we have to take into account that we will have also a ridge slope which will follow the um, or where we will also have the chance to balance out our volumes uh, through the cut and the fill and the fall percentage from these areas. So that means if I basically uh, elevate this top, this spot level here a bit more, um, that means I will need a bit more fill. And therefore, I will balance out my um, volumes, including the, the composites I need to add to the parking surface. And not least, because the other corner, the top right one, um, is at the max of 3%, which we can always check. So because we have 3% and this is the max um, 
we would like to have as a, as a raise or a fall, it means I'm a bit more um, open to work with this corner here or with this spot level where I have a little bit more room to uh, lift it up. So if I select these two again, I can see again the the bottom spot level, it's this one here, and the top, it's this one. So I want to lock my bottom one and increase the top one. So I have 2.61 now, I can try to 75. And uh, as you can see, the spot level has been updated, and so the level lines. And now we can try again the volumetric process and compare the results. As you can see, we have now increased um, the amount we need to add to the side. So it's a matter of trying out and uh, trying to balance out the volumes you are planning to work with, while taking into account the fall percentages uh, between the spot levels. So once we have established the surface representing the construction side, and we are happy with the results, we can go further with uh, estimation and we can use uh, another tool which will project a line on the existing terrain in relation with the surface we just created. So I need to select the ridge line representing the new surface and the existing terrain. Once I've done that, I can press on the function button called create ridge slope. And this function will basically project a line on the existing terrain in relation with the ridge line of the new terrain in uh, according to a fall percentage. So I have 20% uh, here. I can uh, try to uh, do this operation. You need to just simply click on one of the sides of your uh, construction site uh, surface. So once I do that, you can see now we have a new line projected here. And this line will represent the fill. If we go into 3D view, here we can see how this line is projected on the terrain. And it follows the terrain. And uh, this line will be basically very useful later in the process of creating the new terrain. Because um, it will show us where, according to a fall percentage, the terrain, the new terrain will meet the existing terrain. Therefore, it will be easy to calculate also the fill um, in between these two. You can also do the same on the other side for the cut part using the same principle. So I select again both objects and then I press on the create ridge slope and I can maybe change to another fall percentage. And there it is. This is where basically our new terrain is going to meet the existing terrain um, with the cut or involving the cut. Of course, we are able to try out different uh, fall percentages. So I can use 25 also on this side. And uh, once again, this process is important when you calculate your volumes because you can basically balance out your cut and fill um, based on these fall percentages. This was a short video on how to get your project started and work with uh, rough volume estimations between your constructed terrain and the existing terrain. In the next videos, we'll continue with uh, constructing a site using the land for tools and finally create a terrain, the new terrain, and have the final volume calculations. For more videos, visit our YouTube channel, landforcad.com.